All right, 2003 Kubota B7500 front axle seal replacement. I'm gonna try to keep this quick and short and to the point, so give it a thumbs up if it does help you out. But uh, got 976 hours on this baby, and these things have been leaking since like I'd say around 280 hours. And if you take a look under here, well, the right side. It's trickling just a little bit and that's kind of what they've always done and that's not a problem for me don't mind that it never even drips on the ground uh, but over here on the left side this thing has started leaking like a sieve that's how much oil has leaked in just one day I saw it on the soil here so I put a pan under it and yeah I think it's time to replace that now it never leaked this bad until a guy borrowing it from me got it stuck One guy mentioned, why aren't these front axles vented? And I totally agree with him. Now, I've never heard pressure. Let's see if there's any pressure in this one. Yeah, there's no pressure in there. I've never heard pressure when I take mine off, but I am gonna look into maybe tapping into this and, and running a vent up, because I do believe the front axle should be vented, because then when that gets hot, the air in there gets hot, it's gonna build up pressure and could blow out the seals. But that's not the problem on this one. This one's leaking terribly. Anyway, so the first step is gonna be pulling this thing out getting it jacked up and pressure washing that whole repair area off. Get it ultra clean so you don't get any dirt in there when we're taking this apart. And it is just a beautiful fall day today. 65 degrees out is the high. Just harvested my honey yesterday. And so those bees are back sucking these things dry because after spinning them, of course, there's always a little bit of honey in there. So they're back to, to suck them dry. See if I can see any of them. Yeah, well, there you go. There's one. They go in there and just clean these things right up. Of course, that's just the Honey Super. I did leave them the two lower boxes, which I checked, they are packed to the gills. They got about 100 pounds of honey in there to survive. Anyway, back to the repair. All right, got this up on jack stands with the parking brake set, and we can get a closer look. Looks like the inner seal is leaking too. And of course, the seal on the back side, that's the one that's really pouring out, but we'll go ahead and replace both. Let's clean this up. that nice and cleaned up ready to tear it apart so in a nutshell the way I'm gonna go about it is remove these two 17s this is 14 and get this bracket off since that's attached to this thing get your inner tie rod end off looks like a 17 millimeter on here and once you loosen this you're gonna hit this with a large hammer but not going this way because you could break this whole arm off you want to hit it going toward the control arm so you don't break anything and that should loosen that up and a 14 mil to drain the oil out of here. And then I'm gonna remove all these 14s and pop this whole cover off here. So to get this tie rod end off, you could give it a little tap on the bottom, but you don't wanna mess the threads up, so you just hit it right here. Enough to get it off. With all that out of the way, we're ready to pop this apart. I'm definitely gonna drain the other side too. Make sure you drain both sides while you're doing this. Good idea to just do a full differential change. And uh, I found using this big flat chisel with a wrench on it to get this off, you just put it, don't hit, go hitting this thing with a hammer. I, I just tapped it lightly to see if it would just pop off. But when you put this in, just put this in there like that and then twist it sideways and that will uh, spread these, spread this apart. Whoop, something came out of there. Had a shim sitting on the back there. So, 
Now this is where you don't want to get any dirt in this thing at all. All right, now to get this, we'll call it a knuckle housing off of here to get to the seal, there is a circlip on the bottom and it's right here, right where my, my finger is. But unfortunately, the ends that you need to grab are all the way on the back. So I'm gonna get a pick, pick back here and try to spin that clip up front here. And I was able to grab it with this little hook pick and spin it so I can get that circlip with some uh, retaining ring pliers. These 45 degree ones worked great. Now this whole thing should just pop right off of here. Oh yeah, and just with a little tap, slid right off. All right, now I am thoroughly impressed how easy that came apart. Might even just do the other side because this was so easy, but once you get it off, your first order of business is gonna be wiping this down and inspecting where the seal rides. But look at that, it's actually got a replaceable race on it. So that's pretty awesome, I like to see that. Now you can see why cleaning this off thoroughly, even after pressure washing, it still has some dirt. I'm going to wipe all that down before even taking this apart, but you don't want that stuff falling down in these bearings at all. So this is your top seal here, and of course you can just put this in a vise and pop that out with a screwdriver if you want. I've got this clamped in my vise with a paper towel in between it, not too hard, and, and you just take a screwdriver here, you should be able to just pop this whole seal. Right. Oh yeah, that's that slid right out of there. No problem. So, and then check out your bearing. Mine feels nice and free and good. Make sure if you did get any dirt down in this bearing, you want to flush that and clean that out real good. All right, with everything ripped apart, I'm ready to go order my parts. I wanted to take it apart first so I could check all the bearings and they are all in good shape. Next day, I got my parts all ready and we're ready to slap this thing back together. I noticed as well that uh, these new seals they actually come with this part on there. That's that's removable, and I that's really awesome to see. I, I didn't realize that, but yeah, you can take that off of here, off the seal, and hammer hammer a new one right on there. So I'm going to do that right now and get this thing back together. Now I'll rub some grease up in there to prevent rust and ease of installation. Slip the new one on. That's a little tight getting on there. How about using the old sleeve and a, a pipe, a two inch pipe. Oh yeah, that works like a charm. And to access the wheel seal in here, pretty straightforward and simple. I'm actually, you're, you're fast forwarding to the future now because apparently I didn't record it when I took this apart uh, or, or I lost the footage or something. But anyway, so I've already got mine installed, but I'm going to take it back apart to show you how easy it is to get to it. Um, if you get a couple thin pieces of wood like this, or it's probably a few other techniques, but slip these under the bevel gear. Yours might even just slip off, I don't know, my, mine didn't. See, see how that, that popped up by putting some pressure there? And then with that play there, now I can just kind of slap that up and it should, should pop the bearing off. Oh yeah, well, you don't want to do it that sloppy, but you get the idea. So bearing goes on top, bevel gear set those aside and then under here here's the important part you got this little split shim in here so yeah you pop these out and that's what that looks like uh, you got to make sure when you go back on with this though that those little shims get they, they are fully seated and that way this bevel gear gets uh, right down over top of those and of course this gear is what holds those from sliding out and with that out of there you should be able to just put your hands in between here and slide this whole piece off of here, like so. Uh, if you need to, you can take a piece of wood on top of here and, and hit that with a hammer to, to pop that down. But all right, now this is kind of funny. You're, you're probably gonna laugh at me. It, of course, like I said, I already put my new seal in, but I kind of see a design flaw here. This seal here, the dirt is always gonna get packed in here. This, this thing was packed, completely caked with grime and dirt and up in the seal too. So I took some of the Right Stuff silicone, which apparently I use on everything, I'm obsessed with it, and I put a coating in here. 
and then I slip this on and I let it sit overnight so that in there that silicone barrier will act uh, to keep some of the dirt and grime out of there. I almost wish they sold some kind of big felt washer that went in between here to, to be a defense of, of keeping all that grime out of there. But uh, anyway, to get your seal in, uh, flip the cover over and pop this, this bearing out. You might have to tap yours out. Mine, mine came out pretty easily. And behind the bearing is, again, another shim, so make sure that goes back in the appropriate location. And then this seal here, you just take a, a big socket and you can hammer that right out this side. And then, of course, just tap the new one in. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, of course, you can see I put a bunch of gear oil and, and grease up in mine, too, for, for assembly purposes. Assembly, pretty straightforward. Got the seal, the bearing, and the shim in there. And slide that baby on. Put your little split shim in here. Drop your bevel gear on, and then the bearing, which for mine, I just put a block of wood over it and tap that baby on. Looks good. Good enough. I was a little tight getting on there. Let's get a retaining ring back in. I've got the surfaces cleaned up with acetone. I'm going to be using the right stuff on it. I'm going to be using a little bit of Permatex Blue Loctite on all the bolts. The M10 bolts all get 35.5 foot-pounds. The M12, where this knuckle attaches, these are 76 foot-pounds, and except for the M10 in the center here. And then your wheel studs for the, the nuts holding those on are going to be 57.1 foot-pounds as per the manual. <music> Okay, and one last thought here, gear oil. Now, of course, most manufacturers are going to recommend an 8090 or an SAE 90, but I say run 85-140. These aren't high-speed differentials in these tractors, and they're not spinning that fast. So if you get a thicker, viscous fluid like this, obviously you're going to be less susceptible to having leaks and such. So that's what I'm going to do. When I use a really viscous fluid like this 85-140, I like to simmer it in a pot of water for 15-20 minutes, get the fluid nice and hot so it, uh, it'll just pour in there nice and good. Of course, I said I was going to do a vent as well, and this is what I came up with. <laughs> Pretty ghetto, but it's going to work just fine. I took the cap off. Drilled through it, nice clean tight fit with this silicone hose and rubbed the right stuff on it when I slid it in there for a perfect seal. And then I just have a fuel filter on this side. It's on there nice and snug. So this ought to do the trick. And that is that. I'm ready to wrap this up and move on to the next project. I feel like I dragged this video out really long. I actually took some footage to make a second video just to show the three most common reasons I think these front axles uh, leak so much. But hopefully this here video helped you with some, some quick instructions on how to replace the front axle seals and wheel seals on your B7500. Uh, I tried to be pretty specific and show you everything in there. And again, check down below for everything I used in this video. I'll try to put those part numbers in too if they're not available uh, on Amazon or anything. And yeah. Give it a thumbs up if it helped you out. Greatly appreciate that kind of stuff. Kubota B7500's been an amazing tractor for me, and I can't complain too much. Anyway, until next time, this is KZ Guy 2, no nonsense, no how, and I'll see you next time.